Welcome friends to our Touch Art Channel. Today we would like to introduce you to the American Impressionist painter Frederick Freizik, who spent most of his life in France. An influential member of the Giverny Art Colony, his paintings often concentrated on the various effects of dappled sunlight. Brilliant display of greens, blues and purples with hints of reds, yellows and lighter tones saturate the artist's canvases. Who has not subscribed to the channel yet please subscribe and feel free to write your comments about what you think about the artist, his work, and the format of our video. Ahead of us is waiting for a lot of interesting things let's go! Frederick Carl Freizik was born on April 7, 1874 in Owasso, Michigan to German immigrants. His grandparents immigrated from Pritzker, near Brandenburg, Germany, in 1858 with their sons, including Hermann Karl. They settled in the small town of Owasso in downtown Michigan. Hermann served in the Union Army, then returned to Owasso where he set up a brick-making business. He married Eva Grimm, and in 1871, they had a daughter, Edith. Three years later their son Frederick Karl was born. Eva, the artist's mother, died in 1880 when Frederick was six years old. Around 1881, the family moved to Florida. Herman opened another brick-making business in Jacksonville. For years in Florida, made an indelible impression on the young Frederick. Years later, when he decides to return to the United States from Europe, he will focus on Florida. Unlike most boys, Frederick Carl was more interested in art than in sports. His grandmother, Valetta Gould Graham, loved to draw and encouraged Frederick in his artistic pursuits. A visit to the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893 also stimulated his desire to become an artist. Rizzi graduated from Owasso High School in 1893, then began his art education at the Art Institute of Chicago, studying with Frederick Warren Freer and John Vanderpool. After moving to New York in 1895, he resumed his art education at the Art Students League in 1897. Here he worked as an illustrator, selling cartoons he drew to the New York Times, Puck, and Truth. He claimed that he could have shortened his art education if he had been more successful in this endeavor. The next year he moved to France, where he remained, except for short visits to the United States and other countries, as an immigrant for the rest of his life. He continued his education by entering the Academy Julian in Paris. Studying under Jean-Joseph Benjamin Constant and Jean-Paul Laurent, and being criticized by Auguste Joseph Delesplus. For some time, he studied at the Carmen Academy under the direction of James Abbott McNeil Whistler. In the summer of 1898, Freizik visited Holland, including the artists' colonies of Catwick and Laren. During this time, he sketched and painted in watercolor and originally planned to make it his specialty but his academy instructor Carmen Frederick William McMonies convinced him to work in oils. Despite his artistic background, Freizy described himself as self-taught. He felt he learned more from his independent study of the work of artists than from his academic studies. Beginning in 1899, just over a year after arriving in Paris, Friesek exhibited at the Salon of the National Society of Fine Arts. Whistler's influence is evident in Frasique's early mature paintings with similar keys. By his work after 1900, his palette had evolved into that of the Impressionists. Becoming light and colorful, however, he still retained the strict linear art customs he had adopted in the United States. At that time, Impressionism was developing rapidly in France. Notice of the American Impressionist group quickly appeared in the press. In October 1887, a critic for the art amateur suggested that the development of the expatriate Impressionist style was immediate and profound. I was told that a real American colony had gathered at Givern, 70 miles from Paris, on the Seine. In addition to the house of Claude Monet, it houses Louis Ritter, W. L. Metcalf, Theodore Wendell, John Breck and Theodore Robinson from New York. Several photographs just received from these young people show that they have taken on the blue-green color of Monet's Impressionism. In the summer of 1905, Freizik spent at least a month in the Giverny Art Colony. In October of that year, he married Sarah and O'Brien known as Sadie. 
In the summer of 1906, Fry's Eek settled in Giverny, where the landscape, the sun, and the freedom to paint as he pleased inspired him to stay for nearly two decades. Giverny was a colony of artists, led by the French Impressionist Claude Monet, that was favored by American artists. Friesek and his wife, and later their daughter, spent every summer from 1906 to 1919 in Giverny, while the Friesek family spent the winters in Paris. Throughout his life, he kept a Parisian apartment and studio. Arriving in Giverny, Freisek lived in the former house of Theodore Robinson, next door to Monet. The intricate and extravagant garden of the French Impressionist painter was a significant influence on Freisek, while Freisek's own home also had a beautiful old garden full of flowers, vines, and trees. Freisek's backyard provided the main inspiration for some of his most dazzling Giverny compositions. A New York Times interviewer who visited the artist described, it is a ball of flowers with a puddle in the center and an old crooked apple tree at one end. It was often painted by the early Impressionist Theodore Robinson, who lived in the house for many years. The house is painted yellow and its shutters are green. But from the side of the garden, it is almost hidden by espaliers of roses, clematis and passion fruit. Constantly inspired by this environment, Fryzy told a reporter, we have remodeled the house, decorated it, and with the garden, it serves as my studio from April to December. I have a small room in which I keep my canvases and paintings, but I rarely use it for work. I never paint inside, unless the weather drives me. This house in Giverny, formerly owned by Theodore Robinson, was next door to the house of Claude Monet. But despite the closeness, Fryzy did not become friends with Monet, and Monet did not have an artistic influence on him. In an interview, he said, No artist of the Impressionist school influenced me. With the possible exception of Renoir, Friesek's house at Giverny and the garden they created they were often depicted in his paintings, and his wife frequently posed for him. He also kept another studio nearby on the Aft River. Many of his outdoor nudes were painted there. After spending some time at Giverny, his unique style quickly emerged, and he had a great influence on most of the other members of the colony. Although he is well known as an Impressionist, some of his works with intense, almost arbitrary colors show the post-Impressionist influence of the painters Paul Gauguin and Pierre Bonnard. The term, Decorative Impressionism, was coined by an art writer to refer to Freisig's style. He combined the decorative style of Les Navis with expressive use of color and pattern, with classical impressionist interests in atmosphere and sunlight. He was very interested in depicting sun-drenched subjects on canvas, saying, It's the sunlight, the flowers in the sunlight, the girls in the sunlight, the nude in the sunlight that interested me the most. If only I could reproduce it exactly as I see it. I would be pleased. However, his interpretation of sunlight often did not seem natural. In the words of one recent observer, his light hardly seems like plein air light. In fact, it seems completely artificial. A stunning mixture of blues and purples with frost from early summer greens and flecks of white. At the prestigious Venice Biennale in 1909, 17 paintings by Freisie were presented. Freisieck's artistic influence was very felt among the Americans at Giverny, most of whom shared his Midwestern origins and also began their art training in Chicago. These artists included Louis Reitman, Carl Anderson, Lawton Parker, and Carl Berg. For the place of his work, the artist preferred France instead of the United States. I am more free and there are no puritanical restrictions that prevail in America here, I can paint a naked body on the street. The American attitude is disappointing, but sometimes hilarious, Freisig said. On his first visit home to Owasso in 1902, Frederick Carl wrote, I take great pleasure in shocking good church people with naked bodies. Freisig's only child, daughter Frances, was born in 1914. In 1920, Friesek and his family moved to a farm in Le Mesnil sur Blangy, Normandy. His art of this period focused on female figures. In developing his more contemporary style of writing, 
he incorporated both historical and contemporary elements into it. He used a darker color palette and limited the use of surface patterns. In these works, one can discern his interest in chiaroscuro. Fryazik reflected on his technique. I know nothing about the different kinds of gardens and have never studied flowers. My only idea is to reproduce the flowers in the sunlight, using colored oil strokes to create a vibratory effect, completing as I go. I usually make my first notes and impressions in tempera strokes, then paint over this with small strokes, as I must save it as pure as possible, otherwise the sparkle effect will be lost. The longer I paint, the more I feel that we must be more spontaneous. If you look at a mass of colors in the sunlight, on the street, you see sparks of spots of different colors then color them like that. Often you get random notes on the street that really build a picture. With this philosophy of spontaneous, short brush strokes and a jewel-like palette, it depicts the simple daily life of relaxed enjoyment of sunlight and colors. Brilliant display of greens, blues and purples with hints of reds, yellows and lighter tones saturate the artist's canvases. In 1923, he left the Salon of the National Society of Fine Arts and founded the Tillery Salon with other artists. He resumed painting in watercolor, especially during trips to Nice in the winter and during a visit to Switzerland in 1930 to 1932. During his career, Friesek has earned an excellent reputation. A 1931 book refers to Friesek as one of the most distinguished representatives of our selfless Americans. He died at his home in Normandy on August 24, 1939 from an aneurysm. During his career, Frederick Karl Freisieck received many awards. In 1904, he received a silver medal in St. Louis at the Louisiana Purchase Exposition, was awarded a gold medal at the Munich International Art Exhibition. He was awarded the William A. Clark Prize at the Corcoran Gallery of Art Biennale in 1908 and the Temple Gold Medal at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts Annual Exhibition in 1913. In June 1915, the New York Times proclaimed, Mr. Friesek, whose successful work is well known to the people of New York, has the last word in a style that was modern before the advent of the modernists. Whatever he does, he has a sense of design color and style, a sense of fun, an entertaining and well thought out pattern. A remarkable knowledge of the influence of street light on color can be found in almost all of his recent paintings. He received two gold medals from the Art Institute of Chicago in 1920 and also received a popular prize. Determined by artists and the public alike, Friesek was elected a member of the National Academy of Design in 1912 and an academician in 1914. In 1920, he was awarded the title of Chevalier of the French Legion of Honor, which is quite a rare recognition for an American artist. Freisig's work is in over 40 major collections worldwide including New York City, Washington, Sacramento, San Marino, Venice, Connecticut, Philadelphia, Chicago, Madrid, Boston, Houston, Richmond, Ohio and more. On November 22, 2016, Freisig's 1913 painting The Garden sold for $2,407,500. On it, Freisig captured a woman hiding behind an umbrella from the bright light penetrating the garden. Wrapped in the variegated scene that surrounds her, she blends in with a pattern of dotted flowers and plants. The result is a cohesive tapestry of color and light that is reminiscent of a spring country day. The sun-drenched scene is further dramatized by the blue striped dress worn by the model. The streaks are like blue flames rising up from the stems and flowers to envelop the figure, blending it in brilliant harmony with the blooming mass behind, a flower among its flowers. The garden is a masterful example of Friesex garden painting and conveys the artist's full vision of the artist's living impressionist style. Giverny's vitality and calm reflection of the model are pointedly captured as he successfully creates an idyllic image that embraces the scene in its most beautiful and picturesque form. Indeed, this painting was included in Frasique's comprehensive exhibition, 
which won the top prize at the 1915 Panama Pacific Exposition, which inspired the contemporary critic Eugen Neuhaus to declare, Paintings such as the garden and the bay window are true jewels of light and color. Freisig's clear, joyful art is typically modern and expresses the best trends of our day. With you was the Touch Art Channel and the work of the American Impressionist artist Frederick Freisig. We hope you like the artist's paintings and subscribe to the channel to be in our community of true art connoisseurs. Thank you.